All right, so um, this video is talking about um, how we might handle code blocks and selecting the syntax highlighting. Uh, so here I'm starting off with um, starting off with a JavaScript block here. Um, in the traditional um, source ed uh, source editor, you'll have code like this and if you hit preview then depending on the theme that you have available or configured to run for you um, it would render it out in um, uh, with the themes uh, going on now i was thinking about what that would look like uh, with the source editor um or what, with the content editor sorry uh, so first um kind of went with this approach where essentially taking the existing um, rendered part and slapping on a header that would allow you to switch type. Um, there's this uh, copy here around code block, but um, then down here in this triple dots would be like actions to delete or delete would be the main one, but um, that's other actions that might happen in the future would be there as well. Um, so to simplify that a little bit more, I thought about um, having like a Drop down that's really blended into the page. Um, so here we take the drop down component and we somehow style it so that it's white. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, but I think there's cases where you have different themes. Uh, for example, if you use the solarized one, it'll be yellow. So you know we'll probably have to have logic to then toggle the different colors. Uh, of um, what color we want to make this so that it stands out properly. Um, so experimenting some more and then I kind of landed upon this where it'll be the drop dropdown um, in its uh, component state, uh, like component version. And to make this kind of work, we give uh, the code block a little bit of padding on top and bottom so that um, the transitions between when it's not active or focused or hovered um, and when it's hovered, there's not, not a lot of screen movement. So this extra padding is actually there to separate the content, but also give us a nice room for adding these extra elements onto the page. Um, this kind of execution here is what it might look like uh, with a solarized and you can see that it works pretty well. Um, what that looks like in practice um, would be something like this, right? So you have the extra padding up here, um, and then you can choose your um, code that you, um, your syntax and language that you want to get highlighted here. Um, of course, zoom controls are blocking. Yeah, so just recapping. Um, where we're starting from is taking a look at the code. This is in the source editor. Um, if we had the extra space, it would actually look like where, where we're heading with this uh, design. Um, there's an extra pad, a little bit of padding at the top and bottom, a um, little bit of padding at the top and bottom. But in this scenario, that top and bottom, without any borders or separation lines, allows us to be tight with the spacing here without making it look too too tight um, because there's not not an extra container around uh, this area uh, visually uh, so it just looks like it's part of it um, i think we can look at the implementation and see how that might look with this in 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 code and see how it actually looks versus in design but this is uh, i think a good approach for handling code blocks especially uh, changing the type that we have here and the type that we have here should be um, matched to what uh, exists in uh, highlight JS. So if we go to highlight JS, um, there's like 32 common languages that are here. Um, maybe we start off with that as the drop down, but uh, I'm not 100% sure how it all gets picked up um, by highlight. Uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe we just start off with whatever we support in this area. Uh, but I'll leave that for a discussion. Thanks, bye.